Everyone around the world is seeing the images, the atrocities on Ukrainian families and children. Joining us now with a closer look at the state of refugee children in Ukraine is a spokesperson for UNICEF, Toby Fricker. Toby, thank you so much for being here on Cap Review. So right now, you're on the ground in Ukraine. Walk us through what does offering humanitarian help in the middle of an active war look like? I mean, what are some of your primary goals on a day to day in Ukraine? Yeah, no, thanks so much for having me and, and UNICEF on today. Um, well, the, you know, the crisis is a massive child protection crisis um, and the needs are huge uh, across the country for children, both children who are stuck in areas where there's heavy fighting, but also the more now more than 2.5 million children who are displaced within Ukraine and the further more than 2 million children who are displaced or outside of the country who have fled for safety. Um, so what we're trying to do is, first of all, get some relief to, to the most vulnerable children who are stuck in areas where, where there's heavy fighting. And that means getting supplies, so medical equipment uh, to health facilities as quickly as we can, surgical kits, uh, midwifery kits even for maternity hospitals. I was at a, a hospital the other day in the basement where they'd moved um, the babies, premature babies downstairs just for safety. And we managed to provide some equipment there. We managed to refurbish uh, the hospital in the basement a little bit as well. Um, and it also means making sure that water keeps running, uh, the essential and, and the right to water, that children still have that access. So helping to provide some support to water technicians to be able to repair infrastructure when it's uh, broken or damaged, but also providing uh, emergency water supplies and tanks uh, to, to help alleviate the, the lack of access to water. Um, and then it's also about trauma. I mean, children in Ukraine are living through horrific scenes uh, every day in some parts, and the trauma is massive. So what we're tr trying to do is reach children who are in vulnerable settings. So, for example, in Kharkiv, in a city in the north where children have gone underground into the metro station we managed to get some local partners to provide some play some relief some emotional support for children who do so much already um, and all those areas are absolutely is education to get some normalcy back into people's lives into children's lives to feel like their childhood is, is coming back your work is so, so important. Now, UNICEF says more than 2 million children were forced out of their homes. What are you seeing? You talked about a little bit, you know, this, what you're seeing at the hospital. What kind of emotional and physical state are these children in? Well, I mean, first of all, I was in a town uh, called Zaporizhia um, just uh, yesterday, and we were at the hospital there. It's a town quite close to some of the front lines. And children were in intensive care. So there were children who had been wounded, uh, suffering from war wounds. Um, they had got out alive, thankfully, but they were in intensive care in the hospital. They're receiving incredible support from the doctors and the surgeons who are working around the clock to try and save their lives. And UNICEF was able to provide some medical equipment to that particular hospital. It's like surgical equipment um, to uh, able to sort of support the, the doctors there to do their vital work. So the situation clearly for those children is horrific. There are children who have been killed in some areas and, and that is absolutely uh, you know, awful for everyone involved. We met the grandparents of children in intensive care and obviously they're going through a horrific horrific times, um, but also children on the move who are in very vulnerable positions, very vulnerable states. First of all, they have the trauma that they've gone through living under conflict, but also then the uncertainty, the fear of having moved. And most of them only with their mothers or with extended family, with fathers left behind uh, in the conflict zones. So we have it hoping to and trying to reach those children with, with the psychosocial support, with some emotional support and with some areas to sort of light relief to play to be able to to engage and to talk to to other children be with other children be with trusted adults as well and on top of just protecting children from the challenges of leaving their homes there's now another added risk of children being trafficked so what is unicef doing to protect families who are traveling and also children from being exploited yeah, when you have so many children on the move, obviously it's a massive concern and trafficking is, is a huge risk. And so what we're trying to do is improve sort of screening at key transit points. So inside Ukraine, there are areas where children and mothers and family go through more than others. And at those points, we're setting up uh, centers that can provide immediate support, but also can help to do some screening. So making sure that that child is with someone who's caring and nurturing for them, someone that they, they know, hopefully their mother, direct family or extended family. Um, and then at uh, border posts across uh, the region, 
We're also setting up what are called blue dots, and those are like sort of one-stop shops where fa where mothers, where families can get information and guidance, and and also get more awareness of the risks of trafficking. So there, there are people there who may be trying to help, but actually not with the right intentions, and and so so they are aware of the risks that are out there. But also again, the screening is vital, and the national authorities across the region are doing a great job. But it's about strengthening that and UNICEF supporting as much as we can. All right, a lot more to talk about with Toby Fricker. When we come back, we're learning more about what is happening in Bucha, where hundreds of Ukrainians were killed. We'll be right back. You're watching Capital Review.